Hey guys, Ben from Back Photography here, and today we are looking at a portrait session I did with Jasmine Vandermal, a model based in Adelaide. I'll link her Instagram in the description for anyone who's interested in seeing more of her work. So at this photo shoot, it was very, very sunny, so we spent a lot of the time chasing shade. As you can see in the video here, we're sitting in a shaded area, just so we can get some really nice soft light in this portrait. And the equipment I used for this shoot was a Sony A7R2 coupled with a Sigma MC11 adapter so I could use Canon glass on the Sony body and a Sigma 50mm f1.4 non-art lens. Now this shoot was done completely using natural light and as you'll be able to see in some of the photos we actually got some really nice rim light effect from the sun by shooting actually towards the sun in this photo shoot. So first things first, this is the photo that I'm going to be specifically talking about today. Uh, it was shot at a aperture of f2 a uh, shutter speed of 1 200th of a second and an ISO of 100 and this was shot on my Sigma 50mm 1.4 non-art lens so a little bit of chat about why we chose this location so the first reason is that the log that Jasmine is sitting on at the moment has a nice bit of texture so it just gives a little bit more texture to the entire image and a second reason was in the background you can see little dots of shadows little dots of light all coming through on the grass and the reason we chose this area to do the shoot is because I thought that made the texture of the background a little bit more interesting. Another reason we chose this area to start our photo shoot is that there's nothing really close behind Jasmine in this image. There's nothing behind the log, no big trees really close behind her at all. And that really accentuates the blurriness of the background and the sharpness of her because everything in the background is super blurry because we're using an aperture of f2. But it also means there's a really good amount of separation between Jasmine and the background. So let's have a chat about the specs in camera for this photo. I used an aperture of f2 because I really wanted to blow out the background and give a lot of separation between Jasmine and the background of the image. And that's because I really wanted to draw focus to Jasmine who is the subject of the photo. Also, I really do like using low aperture lenses at, a, at their low apertures for portraits because it really defines the subject which is what's sharp and the background which is what's blurry. Now I only went down to an aperture of f2 because as you can see Jasmine is really filling up the frame which means she was quite close to the camera lens and the closer something is to the lens the more blurry the background is going to be if you're focusing on something in the foreground. So I really didn't need to boost the aperture any lower than f2 to get some really nice separation. So I used a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second because this was a shutter speed that I needed to get a nice exposure using a low ISO because it was actually quite, considering it was daytime and we were in a brightly lit area, it was actually quite dark where we were shooting. So even though I was using an aperture of f2, I could stop my shutter speed all the way down to 1 200th of a second and have a well exposed image with an ISO of 100. And that's the reason I chose an ISO of 100. It's a nice low ISO, so I'm not going to get any noise or any grain like that and I'm going to get a really high fidelity signal through my sensor because I'm using such a low ISO. So one last thing I'd like to talk about before we get into the editing process of this image is how I use the sun as a sort of rim light on Jasmine's hair. Now I'm going to put up a lighting diagram here and that's going to show you where the sun was in terms of where our position was and the reason we did this is because then we could get some really nice rim light going through Jasmine's hair and it made the image look a lot more bright, warm and summery. Now if you're going to attempt to do the same thing, I would advise that you try to shoot while the sun is quite high up in the sky, maybe around sort of three or four hours before the sun goes down. So it's not high noon, it's not right in the top end of the sky, but it's about maybe halfway down before it's going to be sunset. Now you have to be careful when shooting like this not to sort of have the sun in the frame because that's going to really ruin the contrast of the image you're going to get some flaring and it's going to be a bit of a mess in my opinion so what you can do is you can have the sun just a little bit out of frame so it's still you're still sort of shooting in its general direction but not quite and then it's still beating down behind your model and really lighting up their back and then showing all of that wonderful warm light through their hair on their back and also around their silhouette. So here's the image before any editing has been done. As you can see there are a few things wrong with it. First of all, because I wanted the rim light in her hair not to be too hectically overexposed, I had to shoot a little bit under 
on her face. So we're going to have to correct that. We're going to have to also increase the overall vibrance and punchy colorness of the image, I guess you could say. And then a few other things as well. So let's go straight into Photoshop and fix those problems. So I added some exposure to the entire image, then I dropped the highlights and the whites as well, just to get rid of any of the clipping apart from in the rim light of Jasmine's hair. Then I added some clarity to make the subject Jasmine pop, and some vibrance everywhere in the scene as well, just to make the image a bit more colourful. And then I also got the greens and just made them a little bit more yellow just because I was looking for a more warm look to this image and I find that if you change the greens to be a little bit more yellow that really does help make the whole image look a lot more warm. So the next thing I did was I dropped the exposures and the blacks just so I could use this paint tool as a selection tool and then I selected all of Jasmine's skin as I planned to remove some of the clarity from her skin and that really smooths everything out. Another way you can do that is use a blurring tool. But I find that clarity gives a really nice smooth effect when you remove it from any part of the image. So I'm just selecting all of the parts here which I'd like to make smoother. So all the parts of her skin, I'm making an effort not to include the eyes because they should be sharp and also the lips as well and also trying to not cover where there are any hard lines, so her jawline and the ridge of her nose as well. And then after I have selected all of the parts of the skin I'd like to smooth out a bit, I get rid of the exposure drop and the blacks drop and then I reduce the clarity down until I'm happy with the skin tone. Now you don't want to drop the clarity too far down, you don't want to lose too much of the detail in the model's skin. If you go crazy with removing clarity in skin, it can make your model look a bit like a porcelain doll and look a bit unrealistic. So I try not to drop the clarity more than 30 or 40 points maximum, depending on the image. So the next thing I did to the image was I reset my brush tool and I attacked Jasmine's eyes with a bit of exposure and a bit of clarity. So I really think that adding a little bit of brightness and clarity to a model's eyes can make the whole image more attractive because eyes are really what you get drawn to when you first look at somebody and that includes photography as well. You don't want to go crazy with adding brightness as you saw just then. You can really start to give your model laser beam eyes and it's really not an aesthetically pleasing look but just adding a touch of exposure and a touch of clarity to a model's eyes can really make their whole face shine. So the next thing I did to the image was, because Jasmine had some really cool purple hair, I thought it'd be nice to make her hair super bold, super vibrant. So I just got the selection tool, it's not really a selection tool, I just made the blacks and the exposure as low as possible to show where I'm highlighting. I highlighted all of her hair and then got rid of the exposures and blacks that I used to make a selection and added some saturation to her hair just to make her whole hair more purple, more bright, and in my opinion, more interesting. Not only did I add saturation, but I also made the color balance of the area of the photo a little bit more pinky purple. Just because her hair is that color anyway, it really does make it pop a little bit more. So that's everything I did in Camera Raw. Now let's hop into native Photoshop and start looking at what else we can do to improve this image. So the first thing I did in Photoshop was just zoom in on Jasmine's face and start getting rid of any imperfections that I could find on her skin. Now there were hardly any imperfections on her skin at all really, and that is due to reducing the clarity in her skin in Camera Raw, but also using a low aperture of f2 really smooths out the skin as well. Not only that, Jasmine had really nice makeup on as well, so her skin just looked fantastic. After touching up her skin, I realized that her shoulder was just looking a little bit awkward and that was due to the pose that I put her in. So I decided I'd just use the liquify tool to straighten her shoulder out a little bit, just made her posing look a little bit more natural and just made her body language look a little bit more relaxed. So here's the final image, I hope you like it. I'd love to hear your opinion in the description on what you would do to make this image even better. Please leave a like if you did enjoy this video and feel free to subscribe as well, it really helps me a lot and I'm going to be producing a lot more content like this in the future. Once again, thank you very much for watching.